Yep. Welcome. So I, first I started it. Saturday night, the way through the six. Mm -hmm. and that's when I was able to like the bread guy came, checked, he locked, he checked the door. It's like good for you, nice job. All of that went well. And then I started watching. Any moves anywhere? No, not by any means. No. Oh. Have some left. Yes. What? So they Lisa, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You guys do twelve thirty on Thursday. Can I just talk to you? Can I say again? Can I do twelve thirty on Thursday? So with this design, we have the... We want to talk about the, the other issue at 1230. Yeah, the came and didn't have to play. If you guys can see that. But he did the They are building the building in this set. Yeah. Yeah, that's the... I don't know. Standing in. Who wants to conduct? Yes. The meeting? Mm. We can make it more secure. So Turned over to Mark and Lisa. Um, you just can't see it. Oh, the one you see just gets a ball over. Yes. Like the balcony starts there. Okay, I see. Okay. December one. Well, the first one in. I'll go turn the lights off. Very good. Here, give you a few moments to. Yep. And if there's yeah. also any business yep. yeah. on the committee itself, any yeah. new appointments, okay. okay. what's your address that needs to be kind of rolled into? Yeah. Yeah. So we're Good evening, everyone. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with um, who I am, my name is Karen Matthew, and I am the uh, school committee chair. So, a school committee chair, I am part of this uh, building committee now. So, that's who I am. So, it would be great if we could go around and do introductions really quickly, please. So, yeah. John Bowsman, uh, one of the community members. I've got a uh, fifth grader and sixth grader over at Fairview. So, if I'm doing my math right, it would be freshman, sophomore when the school opens. Brandy McFadden, teacher, Edward Little. <laughs> Scott Anier, principal at Edward Little. Lisa Sawan, architect with Harriman. And Mark Lee, an architect with Harriman. Katie Ronan, superintendent. Pam Hart, uh, school committee, Ward 2. Tim McLeod, city council, Ward 2. Pam Albert, community member, and I have a son who's a freshman at EL now, and I have a sixth grader at Fairview. Adam Hansen, business manager for the school department. So Marcy, a community member. That's nice to meet you all. So I understand. So my understanding is that first there's subcommittee. If you have a report out for a subcommittee yeah. tonight, or is it Harriman will straight? run the meeting. You don't need to. You don't, you're, awesome. You're good. You don't need to do it. The Harriman will take over. But do you want to explain That's why good. Pam's here? Yes. So Pam is here this evening uh, because there was a resignation with uh, Beth Favreau resigned from the uh, building committee. And so when we were going through appointments and uh, subcommittee appointments, I asked Pam if she would step onto this uh, committee as well. She has children comparable in age to uh, I, the uh, children of Beth Favreau, same ward, uh, so sort of thought we'd slide her right, right on. So we welcome Pam. Excellent. Um, so we will um, provide an update on where we are in the design of Edward Little. 
Uh, for folks that were here for the community information night last week, some of this will be repeat, um, but we want to make sure that everyone uh, is informed of the information and we also have some additional information as well. So uh, our agenda tonight um, will be uh, a recap of the schedule. We'll get into subcommittee updates and recommendations. There's a programming update, progress to date, and then next steps, kind of where we go from here. So the subcommittees will kind of be intermixed to this, so um, we'll kind of integrate you through the presentation here. Um, milestones, um, this was uh, sort of our charge from referendum to the end of 2019. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but essentially it was all the programming, all the design, interior, exterior, the site surveys, the systems, technology and security, and then our series of building committee subcommittees um, uh, throughout the summer and fall. And so where we are right now in the process is the design is completed and what we, the next phase that we move into is what we call construction documents. And so we take the design that we've developed up to this point and we start um, really getting into the detail and putting together what we call uh, construction documents, or some people refer to them as bid documents. It's essentially what we will give contractors next fall to price the building and um, get a contractor on board so we can start building. Uh, the DOE schedule. Um, so there's a 21 step process uh, when you're partnering with the Department of Education on a school project. Um, we will continue to kind of be between steps 14 and 16 up until the time that we go out to bid and essentially it's us continually keeping the DOE as well as all of you up to speed on where we are in the project. With that, um, subcommittees, we have uh, <clears throat> all of them listed up here on the screen, um, athletics and site, um, performing arts, sustainability and building systems, community use and partnership, fundraising and communication. And so last week we had kind of given an overview, but I'll open it up to the subcommittees to kind of give a summary of, of where they arrived at, um, at the end of last year uh, to wrap up the uh, design and recommendations and their subcommittees. With that, I'll pass it over to you, Scott. We haven't had many changes. Frank actually sent over some a couple minor clarifications today in terms of some corners on the field and the track and things like that so that came late today so todd and i will take a look at that tomorrow morning uh but in terms of the site yeah we've worked really hard to really kind of develop uh the the stadium and what that looks like and from there everything from there kind of melded itself out in terms of what would be sustained on the other fields, the materials, the irrigation, the lighting, and those kinds of things. And the next steps for there were really to try to identify what the needs were for storage and then to locate them in the most meaningful places. Uh, so we haven't, we haven't gone much farther than where we were about two months ago. We have had a lot of conversation in examining uh, the, the multi-purpose field, the purpose of the multi-purpose field, the material there, the grandstand around the stadium. We've had some good conversations with Adam and the city manager in terms of what the bond question looked like and supported. Uh, and we've seemed to have gotten some clarification in terms of where some of that lighting could be and so that we didn't run into conflict with Title IX. I thought your explanation last week in terms we, we had one at one point in time explored having storage under the stadium and that was just going to be very cost prohibitive. <laughs> it was It is possible but the cost is pretty grand uh, and so that really didn't support that and then we've had a lot of conversation and I think some good consensus in terms of the concessions for inside and outside. Uh, to try to maintain sight lines and trying to maintain usability and what those needs were and really worked hard with the Grandstand Club for both the outside concessions and the inside concessions. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. Any questions for the Athletic Subcommittee? Okay. Just a, a note that there was a question that came up from the audience in the public presentation regarding the relationship of the Grandstands to the, uh, to the main uh, football field, if you will. And so that's something we're still exploring. The challenge we have is that, that there's trying to fit a lot of pieces into a very tight site. Uh, and we're also trying to do it in a way that uh, takes advantage of the grades that are there. So that's 
that's one thing that immediately after that we went back and we started looking at that in a little bit more detail and we'll have more to report on that but we are we are looking at that and a major filter in some of that decision making process for the entire site was the the total programming needs for uh, all of the sports and all of the physical act, uh, physical education programs that would take place. And so that was, as we tried to manipulate as many different things and looked at renditions with Frank, that was the most feasible one that we reached. I guess I was gonna ask this at the meeting. So my, at Brunswick, their, their football field is inside their track, right? Do they feel the same distance as Lewiston? Because it doesn't feel like Lewiston's. It feels I, closer. I, I don't know. <clears throat> I was just, I was just want, no, I was just wondering if the, the way that Lewis, I don't know how Lewiston's was designed or Brunswick. Brunswick feels much more, or is Bath, Bath, where we go to the state mm -hmm. track field. That doesn't seem as far away as. It, and we've had many conversations. It really has to do with the elevation of the stands from the field that really played impact on what those sight lines and the, yeah. and the feeling of how close and how far all of Brunswick that plays, in, high. plays into, right. into, back. into the viewing experience, no matter what sport you're watching. I'm thinking about that. And you're right, they're much, they're, they're down it, more than the Lewiston ones. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, we had a lot of conversations talking about Sanford, talking about Thornton, talking about Morse, uh, Freeport, like really tried to examine many other schools and what we could all pull from experience from having visited those places right. for all of our kids' sporting events and what felt far and what felt near. And it, a lot of it really has to do with the gradation outside of the field. And I think the biggest fear that everyone came to, and, and it's understandable, uh, was the experience of where Lewiston was prior to where they are now. There was such a significant crown in the field. The yeah. field itself was crowned, and then that crown continued, so the stand set even lower, and so it made a very challenging viewing experience, but if, with the turf being so level, and then if the outside can stay level, it really doesn't take a, you're not looking uphill. You're, and if the stands are elevated, you're, you now have a better viewing experience. And it must make a difference between the six or eight. It does, but not monumental. I mean, we're talking two lanes. So it, it really has to do with some of that spacing from the end of the track to where the stands begin. Those two lanes wouldn't, they do impact, but not not to the degree that um, would really be noticeable. Um, it, you know, every foot is noticeable, but two extra on where the stands are located. If you were in the corner, then you would notice it significantly, but when you're on the straightaways, which is predominantly where stands are located, you, you really wouldn't, and it, it has to do with the space from the track to the field okay. that it becomes noticeable. Is there another area that you could put the track? Is that one of the issues? Uh, when we, yeah, we can. Uh, we'll, As we manipulated all of the fields and what it would, what would it be able to sustain program programmatically? Um, it, it, there wasn't a good match for where to be able to put that. And the other, the other major piece that we need to keep in mind is the national park service grant and so the the track pretty much has to stay in that vicinity um, because that's how we got the track originally way back in 1988 89 90 and so there's there's a lot of constraints we couldn't take that track and move it somewhere else on the property it, kind of has to stay there. And that was a very popular uh, thing that happened throughout the state. There were many communities that got in on those grants. And so we're, we kind of have that constraint of trying to keep that there. And that's gonna be a consideration as we go through the construction of how often that can be offline because it really needs to stay open to the public. And it can only be out of service so many months during, so many months during a year and so We'll hear more about that down the road, but in terms of having that track placed there, that, that is an important consideration, and that was one that Lewiston themselves had to face as well, and other communities have had to face. It, it, it's pretty tight, um, and then the entire site itself is pretty tight, and to how we can match out where we place the fields has, was a lot of, uh, a lot of work. 
be quite frank. <laughs> so the, the image, uh, the, the orange, uh, the larger orange rectangle is the, the major grandstand. And so you can see that, uh, and then you can see the dashed lines indicating the lanes, the eight lanes. Uh, and then you can see there are, there is a distance between that in the field, which is shown in dashes as well. So we have some uh, of the track and field events that, that happen in those spaces as well. And again, that, that part of that is utilizing those fields as, uh, as most efficiently as we can. And then there are, a, there's a complement of visitors, uh, bleachers on the opposite side as well. So those, those are trying to get in there. And then in addition to that, what you don't see on this image is there's a, there's, there's a grade change that happens throughout the site as well. And so it, even if we would want to take that track and put it up on the multi-purpose field, the challenge is that the grading doesn't, isn't, doesn't work to get that large of a, an expanse uh, on the same flat elevation. So that's also playing against it. So, so that area that the track is shown is largely where it is now, where it's uh, a fairly level. We're going to bring the grades up but we can't, we can't accommodate the field over in the next uh, multi-purpose field because that would mean filling in a whole bunch and changing the whole grades of that lower area, so. You can't use, I mean, the track is kind of down in it and there's, um, like on the left, that's a hill there. You can't incorporate your bleaches going up the hill or? Uh, to, to Some of that is the property line. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, and, and, and the sight lines, we're trying to, to also put the grandstands where they have the you know, best sight lines to the playing surface as well. Uh, and so part of that fit, fits into where we locate those. So. Great. Would there be any consideration to moving the grandstands to the other field? Because I know that was the comment at the public participation last week was about the idea of having grandstands. That is a that it, so that is a graded fee, uh, slope too. So that that edge of the um, of the site goes up pretty significantly, and so you you you'd have you could look at trying to cast seating into that slope. It gets a little more expensive, and then the other aspect is that the storage that we're trying to insert underneath them, we lose that aspect because we're pushing them essentially into the hillside. So that's a consideration as well. And then we looked at it also, the challenge of trying to get the visitors, a component of visitors, uh, spectator seating there um, becomes more problematic as well. So, so while we haven't closed it entirely, it looks like it'll be difficult to accomplish. I think that that was the update on athletics and site. Um, next is the subcommittee on performing arts. And so I don't know if, uh, Jonathan, you wanna give us an overview? Sure. Um, we really over this entire process has gone to a number of different um, uh, theaters. Um, we, just all the different high schools we went, we saw the different theaters. Um, most recently we went to um, Westbrook. Uh, it was a little easier once we got an idea of how big we were gonna be building. Uh, most recently they went to Westbrook um, and also over to uh, Merrill Auditorium. Um, interesting where we are actually pushing, I mean, we're not as big as Merrill, of course, but we're like, that's the level that we're pushing at. Um, so to be able to talk to them about some of their things they find, um, sorry, some of the things they really like, some of the things that haven't worked well for, for them at those sites. Um, uh, we, we did that and then we brought in, um, working with, um, uh, Harriman, uh, theater projects, um, out of Connecticut, really, they've been the ones kind of designing it with an acoustic, acoustician, right. someone who thinks about how sound bounces around a big room. Um, uh, that's my simple way of thinking about it anyways. Um, I'm glad there's people that can know that stuff. Um, so, um, really kind of getting into the, um, features. We really, uh, as a subcommittee, looked at kind of three real very different options from one big facility, flat room, um, and then a couple different balcony options. Um, and we kind of settled kind of right in the middle. So we did end up with a balcony on it. Um, and then looking at some of the different layout and support structure spaces surrounding it. Um, and I don't know if, what we have next here. Um, some of the different features we've kind of run through. Um, you can see there we went back and forth and um, people that have a lot more experience even than I do um, with these things kind of talked about uh, what's gonna work well. Um, a lot of the things, you know, now that we had some budgetary things we can start thinking about. Um, 
use model, I think we'll get into that probably down the line um, uh, as far as, you know, hiring a manager and all that stuff. Um, I don't know if you have the pictures. So um, this is um, what it's going to look like. This is kind of standing basically in the cross aisle, correct? Correct. Okay. So there's one cross aisle that kind of splits the, um, f splits the seating um, and you can walk from one side of the balcony to the other. I'm actually going to come up. Um, Yeah, absolutely. Okay, there we go. Um, if I'm saying anything wrong or you want to say something bad. Okay, so um, this little door right here, this will be easier in different views. Basically, you come in and you're going to kind of walk around here and you're kind of standing right next to a similar door on the other side. Um, then you're looking kind of down on. Um, this is, there is some seating along here. You can see over on this side, you've got some seats and those come out, come in and out, right? Are those going to be removable? Um, and then um, you can see up there are going to be catwalks and then this is the access they get to them. Um, what's the next? <coughs> sure. um, so this is kind of standing, there's a um, light sound booth uh, sitting right in the middle uh, right along that center aisle um, that you can see. Um, that's where you're looking at from here. And then over on the other side, you can kind of see. So similar, similar door, again, with a light lock, just meaning that there's a door, or a sound lock, sorry. There's a door, you go into a little entryway, and then another door um, there on the other side. Um, you can see the rigging. Um, there uh, on the side of the stage. The one interest, nice thing that we have designed, and I think we've mentioned this, but I'll just tell, the, these panels uh, will come in. So again, I'm learning all these fancy terms, but the proscenium is like the opening from here to here. And so these panels are gonna be able to come in and out for different options. You know, if we've got big, huge area, all states or district twos, um, big, huge, you know, 150 piece band with all these, you know, middle school kids up on there and our, even our big, um, you know, all city band concert, we've got all the uh, bands, um, all the kids who play any instrument in the entire uh, school system all come together. It, we're gonna be able to do big, big, big show um, uh, productions there. But if we need it smaller for um, shows and then have bigger wings off on the side, they're gonna be able to have that. So it really gives a lot of flexibility in there. Um, I think, Yes, and then, so this is looking up from the balcony, um, looking down, there's gonna be a screen, um, and so they can show, um, show videos, um, and then some flexibility as far as, you know, does the video go behind the, the jazz band as they're performing, or something along those lines. Um, the whole idea is to have it kind of wrapped around, and you can kind of see that this is really contiguous, kind of all the way around. Um, and then kind of some side and um, this, there's not gonna be any seating up here. There is some seating along here, but then some flexibility as far as, you know, mounting lights and just a lot, a lot of flexibility um, available to it. There is gonna be space for um, a pit orchestra down in front um, if the um, drama club decides they wanna do that. Um, if you, I'll, you guys wanna explain what this is. Sure. I was playing with this, it's the coolest thing ever. I just have a question. Yeah. Back to that other picture when you had the balcony. Yeah. So right here, like mm -hmm. where you are, are there going to be seats here? There are there going to be yes. seats okay. behind us? So yep. are they are they going to be able to see over that? Yeah, it's yes. raked. Or is up. it going to be rigged? Okay, yep. that's what I was. Wondering. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Again, that's yeah, theater. Like, um, <laughs> theater projects has done some so amazing <laughs> work on that. Yes. No, we definitely explore the sight lines uh, through all these different areas, so we'll look at that for sure. Can you pull up the um, the um, the floor plan? Yeah. Just so I can kind of talk a little bit about that real quick. That's the one other thing I just want to show you real quick. I'm sure we'll get to this, but there's a couple of things I just want to kind of run through where we where we've ended up. So um, this is kind of this has been our uh, little area. So tech shop with entrance so the real nice thing is we'll be able to come right from the loading dock directly in here and like straight shot right on and that was a big 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 piece that we really wanted to push um, storage storage um, an office we have two fairly decent sized um, toilets right here um, 
and then dressing rooms um, and then supporting with like the band and chorus rooms are right back here so really good kind of flow back in that backstage area um, for when we if we bring um, you know dance companies come in and use it um, you know whatever groups we're bringing in if you guys have seen all the groups I'm not saying we're necessarily absolutely going to do this but if you've seen all the groups that are going to Westbrook or Sanford those are the kind of things that we're like looking and we want to make sure we're providing a big conversation we had with the um, with the team at Merrill Auditorium we met their technical director um, who's like had met Bill Cosby, met Jay Leno, like this guy was really cool to talk to. But we had some really good conversations about what do we need, what, and you know, some real good conversations. Make sure your door is this wide because this is what comes in big semi trucks and that kind of stuff. I mean, those are the kind of things we're thinking about. Just we want to make sure we're providing the facilities. Not that we're going to have Jay Leno come here, but if someday we want to, we've got the facilities to get those kind of things in. So that's really what we've been trying to kind of work through on all this. Any other questions for me at this point? Yeah, Pat. Um, I know where you can go to Westbrook and they have, they have fewer seats in the front and then they have a split section. And I think that's where they have handicapped seating. Do you have handicapped seating here? Wheelchair? Yes, there's handicapped seating all throughout. I'm going to turn this back over to Mark. Let him come. So the Americans with Disabilities Act requires that we have dispersed seating. So you, it's not even that you have to provide handicapped seating in a location, it requires you to disperse it throughout uh, the auditorium. And so there'll be spaces both at the cross aisle location, down in the front, and also up on the balcony. And so all of those will have opportunities for, for not only for the handicap location, but also for the companion seat as well as a requirement. Jonathan, that was really great, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. The area in the front oh. where you said that you could, if, if the if drama wanted to get an orchestra and they can put that there, is there, did, are those rooms, those, is there enough room or are those seats removable or? Well, they're yeah. removable oh, okay. up front, yep. And that's, there. we looked at it a while for, uh, doing an orchestra pit, but it was pretty cost prohibitive. So being able to just remove the seats and put it there was a much more economical approach. And based on a lot of our discussions, to be honest, the, the stage is big enough that if they want to put it on the stage, there's probably, I mean, I would defer to Bill and um, his team there, but, um, so, I mean, you guys can explain this. This is like the coolest thing ever. I've been playing with it on. We might let Jonathan pa pass around his phone because yeah. it's on there. But uh, so what these are, are these are links. You can type this address into your browser and you will be able to pull up the theater on your phone and turn yourself around in the theater, look up to the floor, down, all around, and kind of just experience the space. We're still refining all the finishes and things like that, but it's a great opportunity. One of them is on, oops, sorry. One of them's on the balcony and one is down on the cross aisle. And we'll send this uh, link or this whole presentation out so everybody has the links later as well. If your kids have the, like, the cardboard viewer things where the phone sits <laughs> there, you can like, put it on your face and like, walk around. Or not walk around, but stand there and look around. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And so the next update is by Sustainability and Building Systems. So I'm going to invite Bonnie Hayes up to speak about that. This has been an awesome committee. We've, <laughs> we've done a lot of good things here. We started from scratch. Um, we're, we've branded the opportunity for CTE. Um, and do you want to show where the CTE is? Or? Sure. So the CTE, jump out to the floor plan here. So it's definitely an integrated model. Yes. So the lime green, correct? Correct. Is sure. the CTEs. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So these are the CTEs, and we have 10 of them, I believe, we started off with, and I think we ended with 10. Correct. Right? Yep. 12, Katie? 12 of them? 12. Yeah. Okay. 12 some are new, some are moving from LRTC over. You're right, 11, 12. Okay. Upstairs, we have two more. Yeah. Yep. So what, as you saw the other night, we have where the, um, the beauty parlor is, the salon, the um, cafe and the um, what else do we have there? I think that's it, right? Yeah, on it. So we we um, we've done all of this, and it's been very exciting to do it. So go back to the next one, on it, please. We threw we threw some extras in there too. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, the visible systems and diagrams and signage. Um, what we, 
this is where how the school runs the visible systems mm -hmm. is that we were determined that this was going to be an interactive school so that we could see how the the building runs how the boiler runs how whatever runs and that the teachers if they wanted to could take and build a lesson plan around this on it so we we saw many schools and the sc many of them had a, a viewing window or um, a whole floor or whatever on it that we could look at so that's that's one of the things we do on um, the cutaway wall systems is this what we could see what it what's in the walls actually yeah we had talked about sort of looking at maybe and it might become digital right. instead of actual building materials but looking at what the original EL walls looked like the makeup all the materials in the assembly versus the new um, wall so that the kids could see the comparison from previous construction advances in uh, building systems we've always said that the envelope of Edward the existing Edward Little is just a wall it's just a brick wall there's no insulation or very little insulation between the inside and the outside brick wall so we because of where we are now in our in our science we've decided that it would be nice so that everybody in the community could see that this is what you got in 1962 <laughs> and this is what you're getting in 19 2020 23 on it so that you can see the layers of insulation on it we thought it was a good taxpayer item so that they could look at that we talked about putting that in the um, CTE wing yes. near architecture and engineering yes. as well as robotics and mechanical engineering all right we've talked about the commissioning and building controls and I think we went over that you Mark and Lisa went over that quite well the other night about the commissioning that we do have to hire somebody to commission our building just like a ship would have to be commissioned we have to hire somebody or the architects will hire somebody to commission our building on it and they'll look at the mechanical all the electrical the building envelope the plumbing the lockdown and security we were very determined that this was going to be the safest building that we could have on it so the commissioning and building controls will be tested and commissioned when it's ready exterior and interior materials um, we've kind of settled on the exterior materials um, we settled on that so what you see is is the brick and the tactile is the gray <coughs> Scott, can you where ELHS is yep right in there that's and it's it's hard it's almost like a cement that looks very hard that we can it won't rot away on it um, the trespa tell me where that was again was that inside so the trespa is the what looks like wood around the entry and yes. then the gray band that goes above the entry as well as behind ELHS yep. and it's a phenolic resin panel very durable and this is the tack still down here in this little so this is the tack that's the tactile right there, there that there. image yep All right, so we've looked at it we um, have kind of settled on that as it goes on the glazing I don't remember the glazing so the windows so the just windows. making okay. sure that yep. there's windows what else there. you got there yeah so this is just giving you this would have been helpful for you Scott the first slide <laughs> um, yeah, I know you are <laughs> you're doing great they, well, the uh, bricks will be for more in the brick. Correct. Brickyard right here in, in Auburn. Yeah. So we're, we're pleased with that, too, on it. When we went to Sanford, Sanford had this gorgeous building, brand new building. It had all kinds of polished stone, polished concrete, right? And it was absolutely. Polished block. They were beautiful. It was what? They were beautiful. Polished block, yeah. And it was, it was just <clears throat> gorgeous on it. And it gave it a warm feeling on the inside. And it's also Jeunesse Concrete owned the property owned the pit that was there was <coughs> their their cement pit and so they donated a lot of the inside um, walls and and the polished concrete on it so we said what can we do so we said oh well we have more in the brickyard and it would be really cool to be sure that the bricks that are made here in Auburn are used in our building on it because they used all over the world mm -hmm. so the more into the brickyard is going to have the the bricks for us what else we wanted it, it to feel like um, we wanted it to feel welcoming we wanted to welcome our community it was a big thing to be sure that the community felt welcome here 
Um, we wanted it um, a place of belonging. We wanted natural materials and wood. When we went to um, Mount Blue, Mount Blue, you walked in and there was this gorgeous wood and it was very warm and, and you felt like you were in a great <clears throat> place on it. So we wanted that feeling a lot like what's here on the walls on it. Um, we wanted to be sure that um, we could celebrate learning. We have spaces all over that the teachers can take and, and the students can take classes outside <clears throat> and use on it. Um, we, we haven't actually talked about too much about the, the color palette right. on the inside on it. But what we found is that most places had a, a student commons, the town square. Um, it, it's going to be an awesome building. But behind that building, we're going to heat it. Did you do that slide? With the ge uh, geothermal? I don't think we did. We're going to do the geothermal on, on this building. And I know that Tim was concerned about solar. We had talked about solar um, quite a bit in our meetings. And we, at that time that we talked about it, um, it was not on the horizon here in Auburn. And we decided that it was going to be too much money. It was not a, a good return on investment. So now that the city is, is and the school departments are leaning that way, we might think about it. We also talked about how, would, how could we heat it with our own natural sources here. And one of the sources was the um, um, AMWAC. They have um, energy that they produce. And we talked about having energy coming from there into our, into our grid. But we decided that that was a little too much, too far out at this time, right, on it? Mm -hmm. So we, we talked about that. Um, you were a big proponent, Brandy, of, of the geothermal on it. So we've got the geothermal coming. Um, it will be heat the, the building nicely in the winter, and it also will help us with our climate control in the summer. So we're really excited about that. <coughs> what else you got? Is that it? Um, so this would have been helpful too as you were describing the uh, different spaces, but we added this, this image um, to help explain sort of the town square, this idea of kind of the pl first place you interact with the community We've and the Vanna school. Uh, Vanna, the dark gray. <laughs> um, and so this is the idea where we start to kind of group all of the community access um, CTE programs around this so that uh, sort of pink or orange, I don't know what color it's coming up up there, um, is the salon or cosmetology. The darker blue would be the cafe portion of the culinary arts lab. And so the lighter blue is where the students would be cooking and learning their whole classroom. And the darker blue is what uh, the uh, public can access. The lighter orange would be the library. Um, and so really fun programming session around the library with, with Pat and, and others at the uh, Edward Little School talking about really making this a um, I, kind of they wanted to feel kind of like a Barnes and Noble so it's both social it's learning it's connected to the outdoors but there's also overflow from the cafe and then going back into the commons is more of the student um, eating area the yellow would be the aspiration culinary and then the green is the kitchen that serves the student population as well as the servery and so this just kind of gives you a much more um, larger look at sort of that experience as you walk in the front door. And what we did, um, Bonnie, is we did some additional renderings um, of these spaces to give mm -hmm. you a little bit more understanding as to what it feels, oops, I'm going the wrong way, um, feels like as we walk through the it's entry. We saw these the other night. This one you saw. So the next one is if we're looking over at the salon itself. And so the idea of when we say we're using color as branding right now, these, these are placeholders, but the idea that each one of these kind of has a distinct color that brands the use uh, uh, or identity of these spaces. So this would be the salon storefront. Um, and you see there's more of the reception and waiting. And behind that is all of the, the stations for the students. Um, and so that, that's one area that's developed quite a lot in plan. Um, as you can see in this image here, really uh, thinking through uh, a lot of the CTE programs want the spaces to feel like real world spaces. So really making sure that it feels like a salon that any one of us would go get our haircut 
or nails done or, or whatever the service is that you're going there for. Um, and so laying it out with the stations for haircutting, um, nails, waxing, all of the storage and, and restroom uh, for the public. And then behind that is the classroom component. So then going further down, this is the entrance to the library or learning commons. Um, and so giving it a nice sort of storefront welcoming feel, um, but also a great um, connection to the outdoors. And you can see the outdoors on the left-hand side here. So there is a courtyard out Correct. behind the library. Yep. It just sort of horseshoes the library on it. And the courtyard will have hardscape in it. Um, we've had problems um, mowing the courtyard that we have and keeping it up to date so this will have access to it outside it won't be a problem because we won't have to mow a lawn there'll be hardscape out there um, benches tables to sit at so that the students can come and go when they need to or when they want to yeah. is the library going to be is there going to be a quiet space like because there's Absolutely. a lot of glass there yep. and you're in a very public area. Absolutely. So this is more of sort of the, the public front, more of the social aspect of libraries. A lot of um, libraries and schools today have many, many different purposes. And so there's the sort of group learning and social aspect. But I'll go back to the plan because there's a lot of, um, we really focus on variety of space. And so once you kind of get past that public space, um, there's, I don't yeah. know if um, Mark, Mark might be able to point out the, uh, well, yeah. we, this sort of, um, we call them cave spaces, if you will, but it's a little space they could sit on a cushy um, bench that has walls around it, but there's an opening so people can see them, but it cuts down the acoustics. So they're still part of the library, but it's quieter. And then if somebody needs an even quieter space in the back of the plan, there's a series of large and small rooms where you can close the doors and it can be quiet. So, and then in the middle, you can have large groups. So really we focus on flexibility. So whatever purpose um, or whatever use you need from the library, you can, you can find a spot within it. Is it single story or is it double story? It's single story. Uh, the volume itself is taller in some areas, but it's all on one level. And so as we are laying this out, we kind of think of it as like a street front, like if you're walking down the street and you have the different stores. And so it really starts to become very activated with all the different storefronts and, and the students in the common area. Oops, I keep going the wrong way. And so as we go further into the plan, um, and we have the culinary lab and the library, um, a lot of what we're trying to do is put learning on display. And so making sure, especially with a lot of these CTE programs that were, excite the students about the offerings the school has, and they can, where a lot of the interest is drummed up is where they see, oh, my friend Sarah is you know, in cosmetology or culinary, what is she doing? I can see that they're cooking, and all of a sudden there's an interest sparked. Um, and so, sorry for that again, um, looking down the, sh down the street, we start to see um, a view into the cafe, which is where the students are um, putting the products that they're creating for sale. Um, but when we go even further down and we get into the common area where the students are, they have a view into the actual kitchen where the kids are cooking and they can see their student, their friends and um, peers creating all of the um, goods that are then sold in the cafe. And these are the community stairs? Correct, in the foreground you see the wood um, and those are the community stairs, which I think there's an image here that shows it a little bit better. And so you can what? see the courtyard outside here still. Correct. And one of the aspects of the culinary program and, and the door, uh, the lower door that we just saw next to the large expansive window, they're interested in being able to cater events as well. And so the idea of having a uh, table set up in the common space with the, having the kitchen right next door to be able to, to cater out to that space uh, was an attractive uh, thought that they had too. I thought this was really interesting. Can you go back to the tables, please? There. In their presentation the other night, they said that they, you guys had talked to the students mm -hmm. and they said no rectangular, rectangular tables. tables. And we've uh, talked about it many times and we haven't yeah. changed it yet. Uh, so when they showed this the other night, it was like, whoa. So it's going this to look This is what different. not to do. <laughs> it's going to look different. It's going to be it's more cozy. Progress. That's yes. right. It's it changes every day. Absolutely. 
And so the same with like the salon, um, making sure the cafe feels like a real world experience in a cafe that you would visit um, out in the public. And then the theater and gym entrance. And so again, the colors are just placeholders. It's this idea of creating an, a brand or an identity. So it's, there will be a color on the gym, there will be a color for the theater, and it, it's mostly to create an identity. So when you see that color, you start to think, I know I'm at the gym. I know I'm connected with the theater. N neon yellow is coming back in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, there, I saw some blue. I'm just pointing that We're, out. Uh, it's a light blue. We've I been, have few we've rules, been, and that's one. Of them. <laughs> we've been so careful not to go near that blue. I'm not the okay. pinnacle of, of design, but I saw blue. I saw blue. <laughs> blue is a very calming color. It is very Except tranquil. Blue. That blue. It's on the other side of the river. Yeah. Wonderful people over there. We, we are integrating with their CTE programs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's a <laughs> um, and so these are renderings that we had at the other presentation as well. But these are the really the, the 21st century spaces, we call them. But we've set up the school in neighborhoods. And so it's these cluster of like um, spaces in each quadrant of, of the school on all three levels. Um, and so at the knuckle, if you will, is this space that's been carved out for um, flexible learning. So you can come out with a small group. Um, you have eyes on the students out here. So on the corner, you have a um, assistant principal's office. And then where that green um, square is, and there's a window, that's the, um, the faculty workroom. Um, so there is activity by adults adjacent to this, um, but it allows the students to come out and do problem solving with their peers, work on projects together, or work on projects by themselves. There will be technology, whiteboards, um, and it really gives, again, um, this idea of providing an identity to this neighborhood within the school. Um, another thing we didn't mention is one of the major design elements of the school is wayfinding by natural light, which is why it's set up around a courtyard. And we have, like you can see here, this window to outside as we're looking back at the courtyard. So anytime you're walking around, you have that connection back to where you are within the school. I think we mentioned it last week as well, but what you don't see on the walls lining uh, or, or lining the corridors are lockers. And so the students said loud and clear, they don't use lockers. They are not large enough to put anything in. They don't have enough time between classes to go get their stuff. Uh, and so what we are providing, though, are, are some uh, spaces so that if they do have personal belongings they want to lock up, there'll be day lockers available for that. Uh, and so it's the idea of it, it, it'll, it'll transform that culture in the hallway as well uh, quite a bit. So. And with that, we have our fundraising committee update by Katie. Oh, thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank Bonnie Hayes and Pat Gucci for coming tonight. That was extremely helpful. They have lots of assignments until the next meeting. So <laughs> that's good. Um, and Jonathan Delorme joined us for communication, but we kind of all meet together since we all need support. So thank you, Adam, too. Uh, so last time, we put out this paper, so I'm going to put up because we kind of need a yes building committee to the concept. We know we have work to do, but at least the concept of the labels, the amount of money for each one, and then I'll talk to you more about our plans. So you may have to share because I didn't make enough copies. Uh, so couple things we talked about with regard to this <coughs> is really starting to build it out on a website um, or a page to hook into our website around if you are interested in being a large donor for naming rights we would have an application link to it so that people could apply by putting their contact information what they're interested in doing so that we can turn around and and then make direct contact you know are they thinking of a one lump sum are they thinking of a five you know to have more of a dialogue but at least I'm interested in this this is why I'm interested and this is what I'm looking for uh, the other thing we talked about is having links to as images are now starting to um, come out 
that people could click on an image. So if they're looking at the visionary level for the performing arts at a million dollars, they could click on it and see, do that 360. They could see the image of what, they're, what we're talking about. So we think, you know, this was just to get your idea of are we in the price ranges, are we labeling things. The other thing we discussed is we have been reached out for the performing arts seats. Um, because people know we're going to be obviously naming them. And so um, there is a list started. Uh, the, uh, the business office has a document, and there's about four people, families on the list already. Uh, we have already received funds for seats. So, but that's kind of a low hanging fruit. So we were talking about starting with the visionary level to the bronze level to really start to flush that section out more and then talk about flushing out the bottom section with the seats and the, and the classrooms and so forth. Because we don't want people to quickly say, well, I, I purchased a seat and not really consider the other things, P possibly, possibly. So it's something we talked about, but that if people do reach out and say, I want a seat, can I get my name on a list? We're doing that, okay? Um, because we're not going to say no, no to folks. So, um, and we talked about how would seats be done? Would there be, you know, you're, you're getting a seat, but then we're going to assign the seat, and then when we have a big um, evening event that people come and see where their site seat has been signed. I think we couldn't remember if Sanford said people came and put their tag where they wanted the seat. So we're gonna reach out to people, how exactly did they do that? Because we're thinking, okay, you could do it like a movie theater, here's all the seats and you click on the seats you want, but then is that gonna leave uh, seats out and then I didn't get my where I wanted it, so now I'm not gonna purchase. Mm -hmm. okay, so there's a lot to think about with this, something that seems so simple. It's not so simple. Um, so, th so we're talking out those kind of details. What we need from you is kind of a thumbs up of the level, the levels, the names, so that we can go to school committee and get their approval to move forward to start flushing this stuff out. Um, we also know in the application we'll probably have here some policies. Please read them. Do you see any conflict with school policies like well, our wellness policy? Um, you know, staying in good standing, those type of things. Um, and, but the application, we can at least talk to people. If it was a business that we were concerned about, we could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Uh, or a family that we know has a prison record, for example. Um, maybe doing, telling them that you're gonna have, we're gonna do a um, background search. You know, there's gonna be things we're gonna have to think about with, with different levels. Uh, we also talked about the challenge that a million dollars is a lot of money. We know we already have a donor committed to $250,000 towards that. And how is that going to work? And um, that person may make their, a change of where they want their dollars because we didn't have this. Okay. Uh, so there's so a lot of discussion on that. Then we also discussed, um, we brainstormed, continued to brainstorm um, asks where we're going to be focusing our efforts. Uh, as we continue to ask large donors to come forward because that's more personable. So Bonnie and Pat and I have some assignments to do in the next, before our next meeting um, to see if we can't make more contacts. And does that about cover it, group? I think so. You? Okay. You did a good job. Okay. So it, it's still a work in progress, as they say. But uh, we're also, as I talked to Karen, about fundraising. I'm here for four and a half more months, so there's going to need to be a plan and action of who's going to really take this on and do we hire somebody, and we're going to have to talk to the city about that. Okay. Unless we raise the money in the next three, four months. <laughs> Unless we do it all. And <laughs> there we go. Randy? Um, I was just curious uh, why the 25 years um, cash lives on. Well, we saw that at Mount Ararat and some others is to say, is this a lifetime commitment or will there be opportunity to, to re-look at that in 25 years rather than saying the names can never change? You know, it, will there be opportunity to say, well, in 25 years, the person who did a million, do we continue with that or do we ask for another donation? I think that we saw that on other but that's something we don't have to do. We could say 
the visionary level is lifetime. So. I know it was something we talked about a lot, and yeah. to say lifetime, that's a, that's a big thing to say. Even for a million dollars to say, that will shall forever more be, bear that name. And just looking at what some others have done in discussing, we, mm -hmm. we sort of landed on 25 as something we felt comfortable with. You know, that's a good bang for your buck, 25 years, that it gives, you know, the future school committees or whoever a chance to rethink it if, if they so desire. Right. So that's how exactly. we sort of landed on that. Yeah. And maybe we do a first refusal after the 20, you know, right. notify family, is this something you want to recommit to or is this something, no, I'm willing to let go of? Oh, but good question. And I did get your email, Brandy, about Alvon. <laughs> And just to add to the fundraising, Brandy has talked for years <laughs> about grants and awards and whatever, and I think it's probably time. Right. The only I talk about the challenges, though. Yeah, the challenges, challenges that we have is um, for the turf grants, especially they want to see matching funds. So there's a, a few grants that we can apply for, but I don't want to overlap with the fundraising piece first. So most of them are rolling so i told katie we'd maybe table some of those grant applications to later because we don't have allocated matching funds for that second turf field so we can't say and apply for those grants exactly. um, so right now we kind of tabled that for a little bit until this process right. <coughs> through a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. well it's hard to go for grants when they know you have funding as well i mean it's hard to make an argument the funding later, I can see when, you know, as you're opening the building to do grants for gardening and things like that, because then you can say, this is beyond our project and it can be more driven by the teachers and the students. How would we create that kind of landscape? So grants may be later when, when you're looking for supplemental, right? Um, but we, we did talk about trying to continue to push, and that's something our assignments are, is trying to reach people that we think could fill in the t upper gaps. Great. So I know there's questions on, is fundraising continuing because Katie's leaving? No, we're still working on it. <coughs> that's come up a couple times lately. Thank you, Katie, for the update. So with that, uh, communications subcommittee. I don't know if you have any updates. So we essentially sat in with uh, fundraising uh, the last two meetings and lent our brain power <laughs> for what it's worth to that. And uh, we, we picture our role to be really when, this, when the fundraising pieces are rolled out to really help with that in any way we can. But uh, we will also make sure that we get things um, on the website newelhs.org it is that website is still there we are still posting all of the uh, presentations lisa sends them to me she just sent me the one from last week today so we'll be putting that up as well as this one and uh, we'll make sure we put something on facebook and maybe advertise those links because those look pretty cool and make, yeah. let people know about those so um, and so a lot of this uh, from here is, is repeat from, from last week, but just uh, to put back up there the words and essence, uh, words and phrases that capture the essence of the new ELHS. Um, and so you can see them up here, but really great um, words and phrases captured by the staff um, and faculty at Edward Little. And then the student input. Um, and so I'll uh, give a high-level um, overview of what that was for anyone that wasn't uh, tuning in last week. Um, cafeteria, courtyard, and uh, were two of the highest things or biggest things we talked about. Cafeteria, natural light was, was the biggest. Um, anyone that hasn't visited the Edward Little High School, um, there, there is no natural light. Um, and uh, 
they're looking for more food options um, and more efficient food service. So I think all of that um, from some of the images you've seen will, will happen in this new design. Courtyard, they're really excited about being able to access the courtyard. Um, they really see it as an extension of the school with benches and tables and sh um, shade cover and uh, definitely power, um, as we know, everyone needs to plug in. Um, and then outdoor classroom spaces. The other priorities, plenty of bathrooms. We heard that from students and staff alike. And lots of water um, fountain, uh, or water fountains with bottle filling stations. Um, variety of classroom seating. So as we get into furnishing, we'll, we'll definitely review that with, with the staff. Um, and then plenty of outlets throughout the school. Um, softer lighting um, and display spaces for trophies, banners, and student work. Uh, no carpet, and then no lockers either, um, as they uh, don't use them. So as we said before, we'll provide some lockers um, uh, in small quantities, more like a day locker that you would see um, in some of the classroom wings, and then there will still be the bag storage for the athletes over by um, the gym. Where will they put their jackets? Because I know that was an issue with my son. Well, granted, he doesn't wear a jacket um, in the middle of winter, but one of the reasons because I kept questioning him I said why and he said because I'm gonna have to carry it all day long yeah. and I don't want to carry it so I'd rather freeze walking there and just be comfortable in school so that was and then I started thinking about it where do you put your if you don't have a locker where do you put your jacket in the winter and your winter stuff so that's why we provided some of the day lockers for the students that do want to have that. There will be lockers to where they can lock that stuff up. Um, and so that will, that's one solution to, to that. Um, the site plan, um, oops, sorry, my computer's shaking. Um, so not many changes here. This is just a list of different consultants um, that we have on the project um, from surveyors to geotechnical. Um, theater, um, acoustics, educational technology. I shouldn't say there aren't any changes. Um, we've, we're starting to dig a little bit more, no pun intended, into the, the soil information that we're starting to get. Um, and so um, the soils aren't as favorable as we um, uh, thought they were um, originally. So we're still working with the geotech to get that data and kind of comb through, through that. We haven't received the report yet, um, but we do have um, some information uh, that we'll sit down with them and review. And then the floor plans, um, we've already gone over these in pretty good detail tonight. Um, and then the courtyard, um, I think most people have seen this, um, but uh, the big picture is it's a, it's a healthy mix of uh, hardscape, as we say, so walkways, um, paved areas, um, and then some uh, um, vegetation, but um, uh, very low maintenance vegetation shade trees, um, and really it's all about variety of spaces. So having spaces for um, eating that kind of flow out from the cafeteria, as well as the culinary dining, um, outdoor learning spaces right off the library, as well as some of the CTE spaces, and then connecting all the different um, doors uh, along the first floor so you can also use it as circulation. How many doors will there be to get to the court? Uh, looks like five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, double doors off of the main circulation, and then there's one off the library, so six, um, seven, eight, two, two more from other classrooms. There's, there's about eight to ten doors out there um, to the courtyard. Um, where is the greenhouse? Because I know that's going to take a lot of, because um, you're going to have water and other plumbing issues as long as, as well as propane and all of those lines that will need to be moved um, because it is a, a you know a course that we offer um, for students absolutely it, so the exact location hasn't settled down yet um, so it will be um, probably somewhere near the classroom building um, but the exact location has not settled down yet Uh, DOE schedule, um, we had gone over, um, and then sort of from there, the next steps. So essentially, what are the big things that we work on from summer 2019 to now, um, uh, from referendum to this date, was design development. So really working through the design, getting all the parts and components, meeting with the staff multiple times to get all the information from them, um, as well as the faculty to figure out what, what are the components um, that are needed in the school. 
um, to deliver education. And then from winter, so from now into the fall, is when we're doing the construction documents. Uh, we're working on our DEP permitting, and um, towards the end of summer and early fall is when we'll start to get state board approval. So we'll go back up to the state to get it approved before we go out to bidding. Um, and so during that time, we're constantly doing checks and balances with all of you, as well as the DOE, as well as our cost estimators to make sure that we're, we're on target and, and if we're not dialing things in where needed. Um, from fall 2020 to winter 2020-21 is when the project goes out on the streets. Contractors start to bid on it. Um, and the project will be awarded uh, during this time and construction um, will begin. Um, and then from winter 2020-2021, um, final funding approval happens after the project's awarded. Um, the DOE uh, dials in the books in regards to what the bids were. Um, and then building construction will be completed. So the new building itself will be done for school year 2023 um, is the schedule we're on right now. At that time, um, the existing building will be taken down and then the site work uh, will be completed um, in uh, 2024. Um, so at school year 2024, the complete project should be up and running. And with that, we open it up for questions. I just want, can I see a thumbs up to move this forward to school committee, the concept? Yeah. Okay, I just want, I didn't want to do it and then have people go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so Karen, I'll talk about when it will go to school committee. Yeah. With that, our next meeting has not been scheduled. Has not been scheduled yet. So we'll get our handy schedulers. usually do the last every four weeks is kind of the schedule we had been on um, with it being the 28th and one two three that would put us at the 25th Tuesday February 25th Tuesday. does that work for everyone I'm seeing head nods Tuesday, the 25th, yeah. yep Nope. Uh-uh. The week, yeah, it's the week after. All right, so we will send out uh, invites for February 25th. And you'll let us know if you need subcommittee. I mean, ours will meet, but. <clears throat> yep. Right. So that we get that communication out. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so if there are any subcommittees that want to meet, I know that fundraising and communication are meeting. If there are others that want updates, um, a lot of the, the, um, the hard work up into the state is, is kind of coming to a um, completion. I know communication and fundraising will always be ongoing, um, but we're happy to show up at 530 and meet with any subcommittees that want updates. I'll have to wait for you guys to let Bill and I know when you think we should get together again. Okay. I guess it's probably, probably better not, for us. Yeah, it may be maybe a couple months, probably not, not February. I'll um, push it to you guys when you think you're ready for us to okay. look at them. Sounds good. Next step from that standpoint. And that's so it'll be at 6.30 on the 25th. 6.30 on the 25th, yep. We will have been at the DOE before that, correct? Are we going to the state board in February or March? Neither. Uh, just we'll have a meet with the smaller group at the right. end of it, and that will likely, likely be in February, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, it'll likely be there, so we probably will precede this, but okay, it hasn't been, set, uh, uh, has been scheduled okay, it hasn't yet. Been set so. Okay. Yeah. Didn't want to lose time. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank Have you a great night. Thank you. I wish I could say it's still light out, but not quite yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much.